Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brought up a quick uh, new addition to a DNS that you may be seeing in your networks. It was included with the update to iOS 17, apparently, and also can be enabled in Windows. The extension here is the discovery of designated resolvers or DDR. And thanks to Twitter user HQuest for pointing this out to me. The idea behind this protocol is that it allows clients to automatically discover any resolvers that offer DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, or DNS over Quick. The way this works is that you will see requests for underscore DNS dot resolver dot ARPA. Resolver dot ARPA is reserved for this particular feature. And then a resolver that your client is using may respond essentially with instruction telling it how to use this resolver or another resolver for that matter using one of these more secure protocols. The record being used here is a service binding record or SVCB record, a little bit uh, sort of like HTTPS records and that'll tell you what application layer protocol to use, what port the resolver is listening on. And then in the case of DNS over HTTPS, it will also basically tell you the URL to then access and where to add the particular query. More encryption is, of course, usually a good and also leads to more privacy and more use of these sort of more privacy per serving uh, protocols. However, it can be a problem in enterprise networks where you do rely on DNS logs in order to monitor your network and look for intrusions and the like. In this case, well, uh, you can sort of just simply turn off the feature if your internal resolvers are responding for resolver.r and are not returning anything for that underscore DNS record. It's probably the simplest way to deal with this. You could also filter these underscore DNS records. There's not just underscore DNS resolver.arpa, but individual domains may also offer these underscore DNS records. I've seen some scans by Planet Lab, which is sort of a research network for these records uh, from a couple of domains uh, that I host. So uh, yes, you know that would be another option to, I guess, distribute this uh, DNS information. The respective RFC 9462 was just uh, published, uh, but the protocol that's uh, discovery of designated resolvers or DDR has been sort of in use for a while, like Cloudflare was playing with it uh, f- since I think almost uh, two years now. Haven't uh, been able to use it with Cloudflare today when I was experimenting with it, but you know, was just enabled sort of as an experiment, so it may not be up all the time. And Yamf, a company that specializes in managing Apple devices, uh, published a blog post with details regarding a new piece of malware they saw attacking Mac OS users. The malware is called Blue Noroff uh, by Yamf, and it apparently is targeting cryptocurrency exchanges. It does not exploit, as far as I can tell, any special new vulnerability. It is installed by the user after receiving an email or a notice on a web page suggesting that they're installing this particular malware. And that part is really not sort of explained in the blog post. The malware is simple but effective. It sets up a simple command control channel. One domain name to look out for here is swissborg.blog. Apparently, there is a legitimate uh, cryptocurrency exchange at swissborg.com. So they're trying to impersonating that and uh, with that, of course, make it less likely that the traffic is considered malicious. 
And Microsoft keeps tuning the multi-factor authentication via Microsoft Authenticator. One of the problems of Microsoft Authenticator was this authentication fatigue issue where an attacker keeps logging in and you keep seeing the pop-up asking you to approve the login. And this is just tiring out the user and hoping eventually they'll just click OK. Well, the latest version of the feature now makes a risk assessment of a particular login attempt and then it may either if it's considered a low risk login attempt just show the pop-up or if it's a higher risk login attempt according to whatever algorithm Microsoft is using it will then ask the user to match a number and that of course wouldn't easily be possible if uh, the attacker sees the number but the victim doesn't. Essentially, you're trying to balance here the risk of uh, having just a simple click allowing the login and also the ease of use that, well, matching numbers and having sort of your phone and your PC then out and trying to compare these numbers is, well, maybe a little bit too difficult for some users. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. If there is any story I missed or so, please let me know. I can be reached via our Slack channel, via Twitter, via our contact page. And well, since most spammers are able to figure out my email address, you shouldn't have a problem with that either. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.